Monday motivation and we're joined by Abimbola Olayinka, popularly known as the Peace Connoisseur. And today we'll be talking about peace at work, peace in the workplace. Absolutely. This is a major, I mean, this is, this is where I think everyone needs peace the most and where we get peace the least. Because it is where people, you know, go for their daily bread and then your expectations, targets, deadlines, and all of that. Is, is, it, is, it, is it really achievable in the most general sense? I mean, for the most people, peace at work. It's supposed to be. Mm. But the truth is, you know that the behavior of an organization will take after the leadership behavior. Mm. So that's why we started with the inner peace. So if the leadership does not have peace, then there's no how there'll be peace in that organization. No matter what. No matter what. The other, the, uh, the employees come. So there's a, it, it all rises and falls on leadership. Absolutely. Remember John Maxwell says, and I state, the leadership is influence. So the leadership of an organization will definitely influence the culture of that organization. So now we're preaching humanizing the workplace. Hmm. So you need to understand that you're leading people we have to be human. We need to deploy empathy, kindness. And how do we model all of this if we do not have that? Mm. If you don't have peace at heart, how can you model kindness, Mike? Mm. If you don't have peace at heart, how can you model empathy? How can you be compassionate? So that's why we started with inner peace. It begins with you as a person. Mm. So it begins with the leaders. And remember, we're in the VUCA business world, you know? where things are volatile, uncertain, complex, and what was that last one now? Um, uncertain, no? Volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. Okay. So to combat volatile, a leader must have vision. The vision for the organization. Hmm. How do you have vision for your organization if you're not at peace? Because you will be flustered. How do you combat uncertainty? if you don't understand the market. And you can't understand the market if you do not have that peace. Hmm. So you'll be taking doubt on the people under you. Under okay. you. Okay. Now, for an organization where um, we, this is now, let's say we have this problem, or they, they know they have this problem, what is the starting point? Does training help? The, the management position, at times they may not even know that, look, they even have this problem. But to organizational heads, when they do, can training solve this? Yes. Training is one part. Conversation is another part. You want to get feedback from the people under you. How am I leading? But in Nigeria, mostly, we have bosses and not leaders. Because leaders take positive and negative feedback. But in Nigeria, bosses don't take negative feedback. You can't mm. even face your boss to tell your <laughs> boss that this is what you're doing, boy. <laughs> So that's why we don't have leaders like that in Nigeria, because it is only when you tell me I am leading you that I'll be able to adjust. So okay. it is possible. So this, this, is, this is a responsibility on the bosses themselves, because Absolutely. this is something that the, um, uh, the employees or the followers really cannot do. The bosses, this is up to them, that they have to take the prerogative or take, uh, you know, and ensure that, look, we put this in place. Now, in a case whereby, uh, as an employee, you know, the boss already has this problem and maybe they are not doing anything about this. You as a person, how do you, how do you try to ensure you have peace at work? I'll still take us back to inner peace. Okay. Because, like I said, you cannot have peace without the knowledge of emotional intelligence. Let's okay. remove the spirituality aspect now. Okay. So if you have that emotional intelligence, you'll be able to identify that there's a problem with this boss. Hmm. So you will know how to deal with that boss, which okay. is social awareness, okay. understanding your own emotions. So I will know that this particular boss is always flushed that. Maybe the wife shouted at him at home, maybe. So when that boss is coming, I'll prepare my mind that, okay. okay. But for you to do that, you must have a level of emotional intelligence yourself. To, to relate to To be able level. to relate with such All a right. boss. So now we've, we've spoken up, down, and down, up. How about um, horizontal. You're talking about now your uh, contemporaries, those who are on the same level as, as, as you in the workplace. You know, how do you ensure that uh, there is peace in the workplace when you are dealing with, um, you know, those who are on the, the same peer. level as you, your peers? It's still the same thing. Nobody wants to be around a gangster at work. Mm. So you need to learn to manage your emotions as a person. 
Okay. So it's still the same emotional intelligence. They are laced with emotional intelligence. Mm. It's inner peace. If you're peaceful, you extend that vibe to me, no matter how upset I am. Now, but, but there's something now. You see, in, in the workplace, uh, someone will tell that priority is about what the what, what are the, the division of the place, the targets that you have to meet, the deadlines that you have to you know that you have to get ready and all of that. Can peace be achievable if you are not meeting your targets? Is, yes. it, is, it, is it achievable? Yes, because it is personal competency. It, the environment shouldn't control how peaceful you are. But, but you look, my, look, see, if you have all the peace in the world in your mind, yes. and you are not achieving your target, I, yeah, I don't want that kind of peace. <laughs> I, I, yes, because I feel like in a workplace, the most important thing there, it, it, maybe not the most important, but the thing that matters to the stability of that business is ensuring that you meet whatever targets that have been given to you. Absolutely. And if your peace cannot help you meet the targets, then what's the need? So what are you going to deploy? Violence. <laughs> <laughs> the violent take it by force. No, 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 they, Sometimes they, they're the only ones that take it. No, I, I understand you, Mike, but mm. the truth is there's nothing peace cannot do. Mm. You know, it gives you that clarity of purpose. It gives you that meaning. So you would achieve that. It may take a while, but that's why we're coming back to humanizing the workplace. You don't give target that are not achievable. Mm. You're leading people. So if we give what is workable over time, and when staff are happy, the numbers of the organization will be happy. Hmm. Hmm. You know, um, you know it, I, 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 still, I, still, I still want to go back to this and all of that. How can peace, inner peace, which we started with at the first time, in a case where you are unable to meet those targets, uh, considering that, like I said, the targets or meeting those targets are very important to the organization, how can they help you? In a particular situation, meet up to the requirements because, like I said, if your peace cannot help the, envi uh, the, the, the work environment move forward, as a boss, I might not need you. I might need to lay you off. So, how does how how can it help uh, inner peace? How can peace help you? You know, step up step up the ante. You know, to hit those targets that are required of you. Yeah, just like I've stated, when you have inner peace, you have clarity of purpose. You'll be stabilized. You have your strategies to achieve what you're meant to achieve. And if you've deployed all of that and you see that it's not workable, you can't achieve that target, then it's up to the leader that feels, oh, okay, I don't need you anymore because you're not meeting up with your target. You can't kill yourself. Hmm. You have done everything humanly possible to achieve that target, but you're not meeting up. Then hmm. you will take your piece to another place that you can work around that business environment. It okay. is not everywhere we can function as a human, you know that. Yeah. So if I know that my capacity, my strength won't work here, yes, I'll be glad to move to somewhere else where I'll be more appreciated. Exactly. That's, you know, that's also what I want to mention. When exactly. at times when you don't even have the ability you know, to, work, uh, to, to put what you need at that place, you may have to move to somewhere Absolutely. that is more uh, suited to your abilities. Okay. Are there any final words you have concerning peace at work that you want uh, to, to, to put out there to people? Okay, so now, now we're actually begging the leaders at work to please mm. humanize the work environment. Mm, mm, You're mm. dealing with humans. Okay. We're not dealing with animals. Okay. So we should please learn to train and teach our staff accordingly. We should model empathy. We should be kind and firm, even as we're discharging our duties, hmm. both at home, at work. It is very important. All right. Thank you. Thank Mike. you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Peace. Peace is quite important, and uh, I, I love the way that you put it out there. It's something that uh, humanizes the workplace. That's what I take away from this one. Let's uh, learn to humanize the workplace. Okay.